Hello everybody. Uh, this video is called The Trap of Home Ownership. I've, I've been away from y'all for three or four weeks and I apologize for that. I've been really busy with with uh, my school work and um, I just, I, I've sort of been thinking about a lot of different MGTO related subjects and I've, I've got some upcoming videos for you. But this one, the home ownership one, was going to be easy for me because I do have some some knowledge and expertise in that field. So let me begin. You know, my advice to younger guys about home ownership would be to not own a home. Don't romance about it. Don't uh, fantasize about it. And I know there's a lot of debate about renting versus owning. And I do know a thing or two about this subject. I spent much of my 20s and early 30s in heavily involved in real estate. Heavily involved. I was a real estate agent. I have owned several homes. And in fact, I owned three homes at one time because I was flipping two of them at once. I wrote my own contracts. I mean, I didn't even have a boilerplate. I wrote a couple of just ironclad real estate contracts that ended up saving my ass, actually. One of them did. I later got involved in a larger scale subdivision development, and I was overseeing what I called move up style homes. I actually went on location, found the property, acquired the property, plat did the plat maps, did all the planning for it, um, and managed I even the homes, constructing homes themselves. Move up style homes is what I call them. They're 2,000 to 2,500 square foot homes for those who were, you know, had already bought their first home and were moving up to something else. So I do have some expertise and I want to share some of that with you now. Being mig toe to me, means freedom. It means having plenty of money. And I do understand the romance around home, home ownership. It's a really great feeling to, to get handed the keys to your own home. But that feeling is expensive. It's very expensive. And there's some things you aren't quite aware of if you're not familiar with real estate as much like, like, like I am. Uh, if you're going to buy a say a $150,000 starter home, you know, one that's, you know, 1,200, 1,500 square feet, depending on where you live, you're going to need to cough up 20% down. It makes no sense to get into a home with less than that for a number of reasons I won't get into. But $30,000 is what it will cost you to, to, to just buy a $150,000 home. And bear in mind, 6% of that pur purchase price is in real estate agent fees, not to mention all the other fees, but the real estate agent fees are pretty substantial, <clears throat> 6%. I mean, you can buy a home without a real estate agent, but only a fool would do that without extensive knowledge in real estate contracts. Uh, I would probably venture to, to buy a home without a real estate agent because I know what I'm doing. But if you don't, it will kick your ass. It's, you know, there's, there's, there's boilerplate real estate contracts out there and you can sort of muddle your way through. But if you get a little unlucky, you're going to wish you had a broker that has your back. So anyway, um, of the $30,000 you just spent on that home, $9,000 goes to real estate brokers. Once you have the home, you have to furnish it, right? And that can get into, again, thousands of dollars. I mean, you just spent thirty grand getting into this home. You don't want like fraternity couches and shit you know, and unmatching tables and chairs around your $30,000 you just spent. You know what I mean? So obviously that's going to run into some money. It's going to run into thousands of dollars if you want to, you know, make it somewhat nice. Um, but let's say that you accept all of that <clears throat> and you decide to buy a home anyway. Well, you just bought yourself real estate taxes and homeowner's insurance which can be an additional $100, $150, $200 a month or more, depending on where you live. Owning a home means things break, and you have to be they have to be fixed. Appliances fail, plumbing can fail, electrical can fail. You know, electrical not as much uh, as the other things, but the home will need painting from time to time. All of that gets expensive. And it's like nickel and dime. You, 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 you're constantly at Home Depot, you know, not constantly, but you're very regularly. You, you, you start to learn where everything is at Home Depot when you own a home. You know right where the freaking screws are. You know right where the light bulbs are because you're going to be in there a lot. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, 
if you're good at these things and you, you love doing it, I mean, you can actually do quite well buying a home. I mean, I I did pretty decently, but I again, I was in a very upticking market. Um, the market was really, you know, the market was raging good. It was a seller's market, so going in and skillfully buying a house and and uh, paying bottom dollar for it and then selling it. Uh, you know, 90 days later for top dollar. Yes, I did pretty well at that, but it, it was in a very unique market. Okay. If you're, if you're good at these things, you can do well. Uh, I wouldn't recommend fixing up a, a, a property and selling it in 90 days, but if, if you, if you held it for a couple of years, say, and you, you wanted to do it on your spare time and, and, you know, fix up your house here or there over the course of a couple of years, you could actually do pretty well. But again, 6% of your asking price when you go to sell your home will go to real estate agents. Now, you can certainly negotiate that down, but if you were a real estate agent and you had home A that was paying 6% commission versus home B that was paying 4% or 3 which one would you sell? You follow me? But get this, periodically, housing markets correct or slow. And then you're really seriously stuck. Not to mention uh, neighborhood life cycles, which is a whole nother matter I won't get into now. It's, it basically has to do with homes, all neighborhoods increase in value, level off, and then decline and dealing with those things. But if you're in a down market or a down neighborhood, you're absolutely stuck. You'll likely hope to break even uh, to sell the thing. You have absolutely no freedom to move as you please when you own a home. And even if you can sell it quickly, what are you going to do? You're, you're probably going to buy another home. And if, if you buy in the same market, you'll take a, an overall loss by getting into a new home with the various closing costs and the real estate fees. Think about it like this. On the sale of your home, sure, you aren't paying for that 6% a real estate commission, the buyer is, you know, they're, they're the one bringing in the cash. So they're paying for it. Right. But that's 6% of the price that you won't be getting. So in a sense, you are kind of paying for that. And certainly if you buy another home right away, that's another 6% you're paying. So in essence for homes in the $150,000 range, which I think is kind of modest by selling a home and then buying another one right away, you just drop nine grand for each transaction, totaling $18,000 you just gave to some real estate agents. Renting from MGTOs is far superior. It's cheaper, it's more mobile, it has certain risks, but they don't involve risking tens of thousands of dollars, right? <clears throat> a smart MGTO, in my mind, would invest the money they would have otherwise spent buying the home on say some low to moderate risk stocks or other investments so that so that the guy could have it fairly liquid have his money fairly liquid and maintain some freedom there are some some exceptions if you are like I said if you're great at home improvements love that